Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to go through the Matthew 7. The title of the sermon is Choices, Choices, Choices. Life demands that we make numerous choices every day. Each morning I make a choice. I choose to get out of bed. Then I choose what, to, what clothes to wear for the day. I choose what to eat for breakfast, etc. Every day we are confront, confronted with choices that affect our lives as well as others around us. When we drive the automobile, we choose whether we will drive at the prescribed speed limit or whether we will take chances and go over the limit. We choose to listen or not to listen to the advice given to us by our parents, family, or friends. The process never ends until we die, and then the choices we make are ultimately our responsibility. But remember, all choices have consequences. When we make choices, we are really choosing consequences, whether we are aware of it at the time or not. You remember the two criminals on either side of Jesus. One chose Jesus, the other cursed Jesus. The consequences? The one who chose Jesus went to paradise, the other did not. Choices and consequences, we cannot escape either. What is true in the physical realm is also true in the spiritual realm. God created everyone with the power to choose between good and evil. Jesus confronts us with a choice. He invites us, he invites, and we must make a choice to receive or reject him. In the long run, we shape our lives and we shape ourselves by our choices. In Matthew chapter 7, we are confronted with several choices. This, by the way, is the concluding chapter in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is summing up his sermon and presenting his audience with eternal choices. Let us look at three of them. Choice number one relates to hypocrites. In Matthew 7, 1 through 5, it says, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. With the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Here we have the judgmental and non judgment and the non judgmental, the truly sincere and the hypocrite. What is a hypocrite? The word for hypocrite in the New Testament is the Greek word meaning a play actor, one who acts the part to deceive others. The opposite of hypocrite is sincere. The word sincere comes from two Latin words, sine and sera, which means without wax. In the days of the Roman Empire, some sculptors covered their mistakes and, their, and the cracks in the ivory statues they carved by filling them with wax. The cracks would, be noticed, would not be noticed until the statue was exposed to the heat of the sun and then the wax would melt. But the honest sculptor advertised their products by advertising them as statues, sin, sin sera, without wax. It is becoming increasingly common for anyone who professes to be a sincere Christian to be labeled a hypocrite. I will grant that there are hypocrites in the church, but the average person does not know what a hypocrite really is. Before I identify the hypocrites, I will tell you Before I identify hypocrites, I will tell you what a hypocrite is not. A hypocrite is not a Christian who tries and fails. On the contrary, continuous trying after failure is good evidence of sincere Christianity. A hypocrite is not a weak Christian. Many Christians never grow beyond an immature faith to a mature faith. This is a sad fact, but nevertheless it is true. The church is not a picture gallery of giants, but a support community for struggling saints on the straight and narrow road to heaven. Now, who is a hypocrite? The dictionary defines a hypocrite as one who pretends to be pious without really being so. Webster's New World Dictionary. A hypocrite is an actor. I will illustrate. There is a fable about a war between the fowls and the animals. A bat got entangled in a bush 
And when the animals rushed upon him, he drew in his wings and said, I am an animal like you. And they ceased their attack. When the birds attacked him, he stretched out his wings and said, I am a bird like you. And they stopped attacking. We have the choice of being counterfeit or genuine, fake or true. Faithless acting like the faithful, a sinner trying to act saintly, hypocritical or humble. It is better to be a confessed sinner than a pretending saint, for the sinner can obtain forgiveness from God, while the Bible says God will judge the hypocrite. Matthew 24:51. Choices. The choice is up to you. Choice number two relates to highways. In Matthew 7, 13 and 14, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. These verses give rise to the question, in which direction do you choose to travel? Notice three points of emphasis that Jesus makes. One, there are two prospects, destruction or life. Solomon the wise man wrote, The way of life is above to the wise, but he may depart from hell beneath. Proverbs 15.24 The choice is ours. <coughs> two, there are two paths, the broad and the narrow. Some say that all people are on the same road, going to the same place. Not so. Jesus said there are two roads, and each person must choose which to travel. And three, there are two portals, narrow gate and wide gate. Since this is a place called heaven and a place called hell, there must be a way to get there. This is a gate that leads to each place. Ministers in Ireland refer to the two gates as the wee gate and the wide gate. Jesus said, I am the door to the Father's house, but we must choose to enter or to remain outside. My uncle died refusing to choose to enter the door Christ Jesus. At the foot of his deathbed was a plaque on the wall on which were written these words, one door and only one, and yet its sides are two, inside and outside. On which side are you? My father witnessed to him and pointed to the saying on the wall as I stood by his side, uncle died outside the door. Choices. The choice is up to you. Choice three relates to houses, Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Here again, Jesus confronts his hearers with two pro pro propositions. Build your eternal abode on the sound or an unsound foundation. Which will it be? Let us analyze the passage as follows. Two foundations, rock and sand. Will you build on a solid foundation, rock, or a shifting foundation, sand? He says that those who hear his words believes them and builds upon them is building on a solid foundation. Of course he is referring to himself as the rock. The truth both in his person and in his precepts. John 14, 6, 17, 17. He is the rock, 1 Corinthians 10, 4 and 1 Peter 2, 8, 9. Two fellows, wise and foolish, are you wise? One may be educated at the best of the world's educational institutions, yet be foolish and build upon the wrong foundation. Paul the Apostle asked, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of his age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of his world? For since in wisdom of God, the word through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. 1 Corinthians 1, 20 and 21. There are two futures. The wise endured the storm, the foolish fell. Wind, rain, and floods, both literal and figuratively, came to all. Following Jesus does not exempt us from life storms. Jesus is not teaching a parable about how to build our houses in protected areas. 
There are no storm-free zones. This is a parable about building life upon the foundations just for time or building upon the foundation that lasts for eternity. The house the wise man built on the rock did not fall. The house the foolish man built on the sand fell. And in conclusion, either, either in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus earlier in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus had said, no man can serve two masters, Matthew 6.24. He's challenging his listeners to choose the right master. Way back in the Old Testament history, Joshua said, to, said the same thing in different words. Choose you this day whom you will serve, Joshua 24.15. Choice is an individual matter. You know, a human can choose for another when it comes to one, one's personal salvation. A belief system is the result of one's choice. Here in the Sermon on the Mount, which ends with the story about dwellings, eternal dwellings, Jesus is saying, are you wise? Are you building on a solid foundation? Are you building only for time? Or are you building for eternity? We will be a hypocrite or a genuine sincere. Will you enter the wide gate or walk the broad way to death? Or will you enter the small gate and travel the narrow way to life? Are you like the foolish builder or the wise builder? Choices, choices, choices. In 1174, the Italian architect Bernardo Piazzo began work on what would become his most famous project, a bell tower for the cathedral of the city of Pisa. The tower was to be eight stories high, 185 feet tall. <coughs> there was just one little problem. Builders quickly discovered that the soil was much softer than they had anticipated and the foundation was far too shallow to adequately hold the structure. And sure enough, before long, the whole structure had begun to tilt. And it continued to tilt. Until finally the architect and the builders realized that nothing could be done to make the leaning tower of Pisa completely straight again. It took 176 years to build the tower of Pisa. Many things have been done to try to straighten it. The tower has stood for over 800 years, but it leans 15 feet from the perpendicular. All because it wasn't built on the right foundation and for 800 years although it is a novelty it advertises the foolishness of not building on a good foundation a life built on the wrong foundation may look straight for a while but eventually the crookedness will show up I live in, I live in New York where we, where we expect thunderstorms and, and, and tornadoes and stuff but on October 1989, a massive earthquake struck the San Francisco area. Luckily, we don't get them here. I did, I, I did not live there at the time, but some people here are squeamish and now give considerable thought to their foundations. Buildings built on solid ground in San Francisco sustain much less damage than those built on <coughs> filled-in areas. The south pier of the Golden Gate Bridge sits directly on the top of the San Andreas Fault. Yet it was undamaged in the quake because the weight of the bridge rests on two towers deeply embedded into the rock beneath the sea. Remember that double-decker freeway in Oakland that collapsed? It was built on land that had been filled in. It looked the same until the time of testing. Jesus' story about the two foundations should cause us to make sure that we are on the right foundation spiritually. The foundation is Jesus Christ, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3.11 I conclude with this statement that brings balance to this entire subject. In the end we will realize that we have chosen the choice God has chosen for us before he created the earth. Ephesians 1.4 and 2 Thessalonians 2.13 And now with our benediction, Pastor Jessica. God gave us free will <clears throat> to choose what we think is right. <clears throat> some are not always good, and some choices are not always good or the best. But nonetheless, it was a choice that was made. <clears throat> but all choices, but as they say, all choices bring you closer to your destiny. 
it's up to us to make the wise choice. <clears throat> God gave God gave us our manual, our helper in life, our Bible. <clears throat> My advice is to read it and then choose wisely. Thank you.